Welcome to Longhorn Network Volleyball, presented by Wells Fargo, the Frank Irwin Center in the capital city of Austin, Texas. The first of two nights, number three Baylor in town, number one Texas. These were two amazing matchups last year, and it figures to potentially decide the Big 12 Conference, the only conference crowning a champion this fall as we look at the standings currently in the Big 12. It's been all conference matches this fall. Texas, a perfect 10-0. Baylor, 11-1. So these two, these next two nights could potentially decide this Big 12. Thanks so much for joining us, Tyler Denning, Salima Rockwell, and we've talked in the pregame show about so many different great aspects of this, but the best part, two of the best players in the country. I mean, we have the best matchup right now with Texas and Baylor, and now we have the best outside hitters in the country going at it, and that's what the fans tonight are going to see. With Yasiana Presley, unbelievable season last year, taking her team all the way to the Final Four, and just one of the most explosive outside hitters that you're going to see now and ever. And of course, for Texas, it's Logan Eggleston, who has now really come into her own, a six rotation outside hitter that we all know that can hit and we all know can block. Now it's passing and playing defense like nobody's business. Presley last year, ABCA National Player of the Year, Big 12 Player of the Year. Eggleston this year, numbers wise, is putting together a campaign that could be on that track. So we have star power coming your way. A top five matchup, number three, number one, potentially to decide the Big 12, the first match. Some breaking news as well for Texas when we come back. Big 12, all Big 12 selections from last year, all Americans as well. But you talk hit percentage and for Texas, one of the reasons they've been so good is that their defense and passing has been good. If you didn't join us in the pre-match show without Morgan O'Brien, tested positive for COVID last week, their starting Libro will not be with the team. So Nalani Yosia in the black jersey for Texas, wearing their white jersey going right to Nalani Yosia off that swing. Salima, how does that impact this Texas squad? Well, you know, the biggest thing that, that they're losing in that position with O'Brien is her experience, her leadership. You know, she's just such a poised, experienced player that has the experience in big matches such as this one. I think Yosia is going to do a fantastic job because she's, she's such a good player, but that's what they're going to be missing a little bit with O'Brien off the court. Texas has been out of action for a week. Their scheduled matches last week against TCU were postponed due to COVID precautions. So the last we saw them in action was against Texas Tech here at the Irwin Center for Baylor. They played number 15, West Virginia. Two wins, 3-0 and 3-1 over the Mountaineers who were ranked number 15. As Baylor starts out with the opening two points. Texas on the board with the swing from Logan Eggleston. <laughs> Junior from Brentwood, Tennessee. Three-time Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, second team All-American last year. Dynamic with her serve. It's an area to watch for Texas, trying to keep pressure, trying to keep that alive. A great hustle on the Texas side, but that's where Presley has really been expanding her game. That's what Coach McGuire talked about with her and her, how she's developed over the course of this last year. Big rip from Skyler Fields is brought up. And Gabriel will try Asia O'Neill, who's sent back. <laughs> Longest rally we've seen of the match thus far. That off the Texas tips. Ryan McGuire, the 2019 AVCA, D1 National Coach of the Year, Big 12 Coach of the Year, co-conference champs, National semifinalist taking his team to their first number one ranking. It was a historic season for Coach McGuire and the Baylor Bears last year. It, it was such a fun season to watch, you know, to watch that team as they grew over the course of the season and, and just get better and better and more and more confident and, and prove themselves, you know, in the end, getting, getting to the Final Four. It was a, 
a fun, fun season to watch. And Coach choosing to challenge the first challenge we have seen in play. I think on that serve, they thought. Lone blemish, the opening match of the season. It went five sets. They were at Kansas. So since then have been on a tear much as they were last year. Both of these teams going 15 and one in Big 12 play, splitting the Big 12 championship. Texas losing in the third round at home against Louisville. Baylor going on after a run. They beat Sacred Heart, USC, number 14, Purdue, number nine, Washington, and lose. 3-1 in the national semifinal against number five, Wisconsin. So it looks like we have a ruling here. And it was called no touch. The challenge from Coach McGuire, unsuccessful. Richard sophomore A.J. O'Neill from South Lake, Texas. Played in all 33 sets, started all 11 matches now, serving for Texas. Salima, you talk on the Baylor side, going back to last year, I think most people, the key to that offense, or keying the offense, the setting position. Hannah Lockin, who you will now refer to as Hannah Sedwick, married earlier this year, but missed the first 10 matches, made her season debut on October 29th, but they have junior Callie Williams playing the setting position tonight. Yep, she's, she transferred in, and you know, Coach McGuire said even last year when she was, she was sitting and watching, she was so helpful for Hannah Lockin and helped her in her development and see the game a little bit better. So her being on the court has been has been huge for them. But right now you'll see Sedwick is back back in the in the game right now. So keep an eye on that setter position for Baylor number one with Williams. Sedwick number 14. The senior as Texas gets the back row kill from Logan Eggleston. Molly Phillips is into the game as Jenna Gabriel, the Texas setter, serving. Violation called on the Baylor side. It's one of your keys you talk for Baylor. They need to be more than just Presley, but as we've seen early on, five kills, seven swings, no airs from Presley, but they keep going away. Well, you know, and it starts with the pass and it starts with the dig. They need some quality touches to make sure they're doing a nice job covering and playing defense. Got to get that ball a little bit closer to the net to allow them to set McGee a little bit and, or have uh, Sedwick be able to attack the ball. One of the keys as well, serving for Texas, as we just saw, a service air from Gabriel. Gabriel Presley will serve. Senior from Cypress, Texas. Reigning Offensive Player of the Week in the Big 12. Reigning National Player of the Year. Moving her around right side. I mentioned off-season knee surgery for Presley, but her number's starting to creep up to what we saw last year. You know, and I want to keep an eye on Brand Schreiber tonight and just what she's doing, and of course, allowing that opportunity for Presley to swing out of the back row. It's number 32, the Libro in white, who will put this ball up for Baylor. As Fields in Texas lose that ball out of bounds, so an early lead for the third rank. Baylor Bears. will lead to a Texas timeout. It's a 3-0 scoring run for the number three team in the country. Come back for more to that fifth set. It was tight all the way through, 15-9. Baylor then number three, defeated number one, Texas. It was their lone win in program history over a number one team, 12 losses in the other matchups. Texas has dominated this series all time, though 84-3, including 44-0 and 0 
here in Austin. But Salim, when we did the match last year, Texas was dominant in that 3-0 at Gregory Gymnasium on October 23rd. But they don't have that environment tonight here playing in their temporary digs of the Irwin Center. It's definitely a different, a different feel and a different vibe, and you use that energy of the crowd to kind of keep you going and get you get you fired up. But right now, I'm, I'm super impressed with what Baylor's doing defensively, slowing some balls down with their touches, keeping the ball alive, and, and providing some opportunities for their, their hitters to attack. Texas getting the block defensively. Skyler Fields serving for Texas. Eggleston sent back by the Baylor block. Second in the conference, 2.55 blocks per set. Well, and this is this is a big reason Lockins in the front row right now. You know, they wanted they wanted a bigger block. I know they're they're super concerned about the outsides going off for Texas. So a nice substitution, having her in the game, playing front row, being able to put up a sizable block. Sedwick. Oh, Sedwick. <laughs> sorry. That'll be hard for all of us I'm if you sorry. follow Baylor. It was Hannah Lockin now. Hannah Sedwick, but a huge piece for them to have. Their center that played all of last year, preseason, all Big 12. So Texas gets the ball back. I'll apologize to Hannah's husband. <laughs> Mary Baylor kicker, Jay, on May 25th of 2020. Coach McGuire talked about one of the unfortunate parts of COVID, the team unable to go and attend and be part of that. But congratulations to the Sedwicks. May take some getting used to for us. You talk keys to the match for Texas serving wise. Nalani Yosia back there. We've talked to her big jump serve. There is the pictures from the wedding. You see the football jersey and the volleyball jersey. So nice, beautiful picture. To get back service-wise for Texas, we've seen now two service errors from the Longhorns. This figures to be a tight match. You don't want to give those points away. That was Marika Vandermark on the swing, the junior from the Netherlands preseason all big. 12 nod for her. She was an integral piece for the Bears' success last year. <laughs> Miscommunication on the Texas side. Leads to an opportunity and conversion for Baylor. Number 31, Warren Harrison. You had mentioned it pregame, but also worth mentioning now that it's not just Presley, Vandermark, some key transfer pieces, including Harrison coming over from North Carolina. And I tell you, she has a heavy arm. She can play the game. And I, I think this is a, a huge addition to Baylor and for their future. Really nice to see her on the court. Coach McGuire saying Harrison transferred over to play at this type of level in these type of matchups as Texas goes to a good matchup that they like offensively. Asia O'Neal on the slide who converts. So it'll be interesting to see Texas serving strategy. Of course, with Eggleston back there, she might just go ahead and rip it. But if they go after Presley a little bit more, try to get her handling the ball, those seams, or just go back and bang it a little bit. Eggleston leads this team in aces and aces per set. But a big swing, number 22 for Baylor. 17th time career-wise she's been named to in a weekly award, tied for the most in Big 12 history as the reigning offensive player of the week. Peterson brings it up. Gabriel will try for Fields. Gabriel back row. Eggleston sent back on the block. Presley ends the sequence. Had a nice rally back and forth. And I think what, what Baylor is able to do right now, keep the ball alive, 
they're setting the ball to other people. That's just keeping Texas honest. And then when they need the kill at the end, they're going to go to Presley when they're in system. Texas, no answer for Presley. Eight kills, no errors, 11 swings, 727 thus far for the reigning national player of the year. But a good response on the Texas side of the net. Keep it within five and side out. Third service air from Texas. So Neil will sit down. Emily Van Slake, the sophomore from Houston, Texas, will serve for Baylor. Played in all 43 of their sets. All 13 matches now. The overpass sent back Gabriel. Back set for Butler. I like how they're moving Butler around a little bit, having her hit just kind of move to the right side and just hit this high ball here. The set was a little bit off, rhythm not perfect, but she was able to handle it and put it on the floor. I was going to say, not traditionally where we see Rian Butler for Texas, but they get the kill nonetheless. Gabriel serving. Air scramble, get it back over. You'll see it will set up Fields. I like what Fields is doing right now. She looks comfortable, she looks ready and, and fired up to play, but I like, I like her demeanor, I like her angles. Taking some nice swings early on here. Right at Bram Schreiber. Did the sophomore from Missouri City, Texas go? 3.27 kills per set. See that Texas serve, putting some pressure on Baylor the last couple of sequences, and leads to offense out of the middle. And that's exactly what happens. You serve them tough, get them out of system, get an easy ball over, and then you have opportunities to score. Nice job there by Texas, and it's from the serving of Gabriel. 3-0 scoring run for the Longhorns. That'll end, Presley. 11 double digit kill matches this year. Second in the Big 12, 11th in the NCAA in kills per set, leads the Big 12 in total points. Twenty twenty preseason Big 12 player of the year. Going right at the Libro for Texas. Presley. So this is the advantage that that Baylor has when Presley's in the back row. An excellent dig. You get all the blockers for Texas pinching in on the middle hitters and leaving Presley alone to go one-on-one -on -one and just hit this ball down the line. They really feel like the light's coming on, the health is coming together, and Coach McGuire very excited with where she's at, but also where she projects to be come springtime. Well, and that's that's always the exciting part with your with your team is thinking about how much better they're gonna get. So Presley will serve her team leading by five. Have never won here in Austin. 0-44 Baylor. Notch their first win since 2001 against Texas last year on their home floor. So I think safe to say a developing budding rivalry here in the Big 12. I, li I like the way you say that for sure. It, it, it sparked last, last season and it's, it's a good one and a big one that I think will continue for years. Texas. Thought they had an ace. You heard the initial groan, but then called back as an ace. So Skyler Field serving.
Longhorn's converting something there, but another aspect without Morgan O'Brien, she's second on the team in aces, had 12 coming into the match, but who will pick up the slack? Where does Texas go to find more serving pressure outside of the voices we know? And this is nice. It's nice to see Skylar Fields in here, so they have to mix some things up, of course, with their DSs and subs. And Skylar Fields with this, this jump serve, which we haven't seen, and being in the back, back row. Texas with some big defense there. Breon Butler, Molly Phillips sending back Harrison. And a huge block here. Just watch the timing. And Phillips pressing over, and there is no room for her to swing at all. A 4-0 scoring run and hitting percentage, 359. Kills per set, 15.27. Leads the Big 12 second in the country. But defensively, they're holding opponents to 154. That's second in the Big 12, ninth in the country. First in the Big 12, the Baylor Bears. Opponents hitting 131. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's where they want to continue to get better defensively here in this match. Texas has found something good with Skylar Field serving. Can they continue that rally? It's out to Eggleston. Point going to Baylor. And in a fantastic pickup by Fields in the back row. Just chases this ball down. I'm, I'm seriously fired up about what Fields is doing in the back row right now. And Eggleston just missed that ball wide down the line. Talk trickle down for Texas, number 19 in white. Riley Heinrich coming in, came in for Skyler Fields in that last switchover. So without O'Brien, who will be called on to fill that role as Butler sits down, Asia O'Neill back on with Yosia to serve. And the versatility. See Presley coming out of the back row and the variety of offensive shots in her game. And it's so fast. You see, she comes screaming in here, tips this ball deep. Gabriel reads it, but she charges that play. She thinks she's going to tip it short and then gets caught. Knee and hamstring look pretty good there. Yeah. <laughs> Flying from that back row. So Baylor leading by two with the ball to serve. 11th kill for Presley. Eggleston sent back. Gabriel will give it to her again. Langer gets the ball over. Chance for the Bears. Harrison sent back. Not really the first time offensively we have called the name of Vandermark for Baylor. And they've said her a couple times, haven't had much success. But the barrel block doing a nice job. Texas, of course, scrambling to keep keep the ball alive. But it's Baylor that's able to continue to come back with some swings to finish. So they're 6-6. Six, six. Opposite converts on the other side. Harrison winning the matchup against Phillips. And well, that's just a smart play. She sees the tip coming, kind of waits a little bit on her block, and hangs, throws the ball back down. So for Texas as well, we're seeing another new wrinkle. Getting some size with Ashley Shook coming in, the senior. Six foot one coming in for Gabriel at five foot eight. What's Texas looking for there? Well, right now it's just a setting change. She's in the back row right now, so they, they just need a little bit more rhythm. You see Coach Elliott's over there talking to, to Jenna Gabriel and just kind of walking her through some things that he might want to see her do with the offense. And I, I think it's just giving her a spell Hey, let's take a minute here, talk about what we, we wanted to execute with the game plan, and let Ashley Shook go in there and, and do what she needs to do. Well, Shook has the right idea as a senior. You come in, get the ball to your best player, right? That's it, man. <laughs> and it, it is good timing, because now she rotates to the front row, gives them an opportunity for a big block as well. She'll be playing in her final home matches for Texas across these two nights. Tomorrow night, senior night, the lone senior on this roster, the 2017 all-American honorable mention. 
So this is a tough rotation for Baylor right now, and you're going to see this substitution with uh, with Emily Van Slate because they are going to need some more passing. Right there, they had Presley and Harrison in the passing pattern, so two two passers that could be exploited. So they've they've done this a few times in rotation one, where they get Slate in there That's for Vandermark. Five seven in Van Slate for six six Vandermark. It's Texas. You talk serving, one of the keys to the match. Fourth service error in what is a three-point first set. Van Slate will sit down, Vandermark back on. It's a missed opportunity for Texas. It really was, and, and sometimes they try to thread the needle. You know, you really try to be so precise, and sometimes you just need to serve that zone hard. Freshman Campbell Bowden serving for Baylor. Shook for O'Neal and Baylor there with the big stuff block solo from Yasiana Presley. Oh man, this move, look at the explosiveness. She starts in this bunch here, swings out, perfect timing, and presses back in to block O'Neal here. That's what we expect to see from the reigning national player of the year. 5-2 run for her squad. Presley brought up by Field. Shook will try Eggleston. Off the tips. I'm going to keep talking about Field digging balls in the back row. <laughs> A nice swing, of course, by Eggleston off the, the top of the block. Smart swing. But started with the Fields dig. Well, we were talking impact players. Who could be an impact player? And Fields was one that you had mentioned and what she can do. So much talent as another crucial serving air. Eggleston going for the big swing and will give Baylor set point. See if she goes down the line here. Texas will stave it off with a kill from Skyler Fields. Five service errors for the Longhorns. Baylor remains on set point. Vandermark off the Texas tips. And that'll give the set to Baylor some disagreement on the Texas side. Is Eggleston going over to talk to the up judge back as we look one more time? And again, we always we talk about this a lot. It's so hard, difficult to see the touches. So this is a big call as it could end the set for Baylor and Make a big statement in the opening stanza, but the call overturned a successful challenge from Jarrett Elliott and the Texas Longhorns. No touch rule on the swing from Vandermark. So no set for Baylor, but still set point. And it's a it's a big it's a big call at the right time, a smart challenge at the right time. You saw the Texas sideline, their captain in Eggleston emphatic. They felt as if the call was wrong and Coach backing them up, so a chance for Texas here. What do they do? Asia O'Neill keeping that ball alive. Fields over the Baylor block. Unbelievable dig by Asia O'Neill. So a set that was a little bit off the net for Baylor, and Presley just had to stand and hit a roll shot over the net. And O'Neill just lays out here to save that ball. We showed you a piece on Asia O'Neill and her amazing journey. And that conversion, send this first set to extra points. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. Big play. So we'll see if uh, O'Neill goes straight down the line here to Bram Schreiber to try to predict the offense or if they head on over to Presley. If you're coaching, what are you saying? Where are you telling her to go? 
Well, I'm going down the line to see if we can get the ball more predictable, set it to the outside to Presley and get a block form. That is where they go. Where does Baylor go with the ball? Going to the dump. But Peterson there, fields for Texas. Baylor there defensively. Presley will have a chance. Shook for fields again. Presley wants more pushing down the line. Eggleston there. She'll get back up and just have to send it over. Another chance for Baylor. Presley again, Eggleston there. Fields with the swing and long. So do we have a conclusion of this opening set? That is the question. We thought we were there earlier. Coach Elliott had got up, conferred with his team, but now Texas heading to the bench. Baylor snapping a 23-set road losing streak. Wow, what a phenomenal end to set number one. We get the rest of tonight and tomorrow. Come on back to Austin. Texas, that gave them a chance, but one of the things for the Longhorns in a two-point first set, they gave away five at the service line. You know, and that's tough. You, you want to you wanna serve a team with a fast offense pretty tough. And, and we might be seeing some of that, some of those service errors. Because of that, they're trying really hard to serve specifically to certain players or really go after it. But those that's the difference in the match, right? So you can afford to have Eggleston miss a serve. You can afford to have Yosia miss a serve. But the rest of them got to Got to hang on to it. All right, put on your coach's cap. Take me to the Texas sideline. You see what Presley's doing. What do they do to try to slow her down? Well, really what they, they need to do is, they may not be able to slow her down, but they, they need to do more stuff on their side of the net. It's the unforced errors we talked about, the service errors, other people scoring on the Texas side as well. So Presley, you know, you're going to put a couple blockers on her, do your best to, to really slow her down, but, but neutralizing everybody else and eliminating your unforced errors is going to be key, key here. We talk about that everybody else. Vandermark got a swing and a kill for Baylor. The point previous, but a good response from Texas. Good pass, good set. Termination by Skylar Fields, who will go back to serve, who first time we saw her serving really impressed you. I, I mean, She's jump serving, you know, this is something I haven't seen. It's it's not super hard, but it's got a little action on it. So I, I like what she's doing with it. It's consistent, not missing a serve. And um, in there, hanging in there on defense. Well, you talk quickness on the Baylor side of the net and their offense so quick, going right back to that back middle where Field was just not much time for her to respond to that swing. It's difficult to react to that, and especially when you haven't been in there consistently over the course of the year. So Presley registering her most amount of kills in a single set this season with 11 in the opener. Eggleston pacing Texas with six, five from Fields as well. Baylor just under 300, 295 their hit percentage for Texas, 240. And that's what Texas has done so great this year. Their efficiency best in the country but best in the Big 12, fifth in the country is Baylor and holding teams hit percentage wise. And Baylor finally getting McGee the ball. It's Kara McGee, the sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Wearing number 17, six foot four, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, second consecutive time. She's been named such, but Texas getting their first lead of the day. Early on here in set number two. Beautiful up by Yosia. Into the middle. McGee once again. Super fast transition. What I love was the play at the net with Presley. She knew what she was doing. She hit that ball right into the block so she could play it and have them be able to set the middle. McGee wasn't even, I mean, didn't even really get off the net, but just step close up quick. Sedwick going right there. There's an air from Presley and the Bears. Give the side out back to Texas. You know, and she's got that deep, deep serve. She gets all the way back, whatever facility she's in, Presley goes all the way back to serve. So sometimes, 
Sometimes it doesn't quite make it to the net. Plenty of room here at the Irwin Center. Not too much if you're playing at Gregory. Have to think Baylor enjoys being here without having the fans right on top of you. But this is the most fans that we have seen. Obviously, social distancing and protocols in place. Masks being wear, worn within the arena by the fans. But a good Texas crowd out. Gabriel at the setting position, back to Asia O'Neal. Man, that's the speed they need and the quickness of O'Neal. You'll see here, this ball's off the net. That timing is perfect. She cuts that back into the court right in the middle of the block. Look just like beautiful patience, too. That yeah, look it's really we just nice. had. O'Neal waits for it and takes it home. Texas back in the lead. Eggleston with the big serve. Gabriel for O'Neal again. Some fire from Asia O'Neal. Oh, man. She, she absolutely bounced that ball straight down. See her transition here. And this is what they've been working on, getting behind as quickly as possible. Crushes this ball in front of Ram Shriver. And look at the reaction right after onto the other side of the net. Texas showing some fight here at home. O'Neal thought she had one there. That ball trickling down the net, so the point going to Baylor. So you're going to see Van Slate here blocking, I would imagine. You know, Texas is aware. They're going to look and see if there's some blocking switches. It's number three for Baylor. See if they go behind here. Front line on the left. Texas there, second time we've seen a miscommunication talking for Texas. Maybe well, a product of missing O'Brien. Well, and that's going to happen when you're in a different role and you're, you're used to one thing or another or playing next to certain people. Saw it with Yosia and Gabriel. Back in the first set, Gabriel will try fields here. Dump down the line, Eggleston trying to keep it alive but can't get there. What a play on the Baylor side. Fantastic play on the Baylor side. See this unbelievable dig. A smart play. Callie Williams transferred over from Tennessee, was thrown into that starting setter spot with the injury to Sedwick. Unbelievable defensive effort and play on the Baylor side. See, Presley just touches it. You got Bain Slate just laying out for that ball. A 4-0 run for Baylor. Talked about Van Slate being in there as a DS. Texas 4-0 Neal, who breaks the run. Smart, but they got to be aware of the blocking switches. That time, Van Slate, a 5 7, you know, outside hitter, switched to the other side of the court. I mean, it was, it was a nice swing, and O'Neill was able to score, but something uh, Texas has to keep an eye on. O'Neill to serve. Fields sent back. With the ball out of bounds. So Skyler Fields off to a very nice start offensively really for nice Texas. Start. Really nice start. That's a ball that's a little bit tight to the net. Harrison got all over it, but wasn't able to block that ball in bounds. Gone her way 17 times, six kills, tied for the team lead with Eggleston, but hitting a 294 clip. Best on the team for the outsides. Looking to. Looks like he was trying to call some out of rotation, but they're there actually in the right spots. I believe. We got Vane Slate. And Harper, then Harrison.
So they called the replay there on what you had picked up mm -hmm. in terms of the yeah. alignment for Baylor. Yeah, they stacked all their hitters to the left side of the court. Looked like the down ref thought he saw an overlap and it, it, he was wrong. So the point initially was awarded to Texas, taken back 8-8. Baylor getting the point coming out of that and now serving is Bowden. Goes short to Peterson. But Butler, Texas liking what they're getting on the right side. Yeah, they are. And, and Butler, they've been wanting to expand this. Her, just everything that she's doing and her attack range, hitting this ball off one foot, running some slides here. You can see her hang a little bit for that ball that was high. And that's the beauty of having Breon Butler. She can, if the ball's a little bit too high, she can hang and just wait and still be able to attack it. Six foot four, junior from Kendleton, Texas. Nice up from Eggleston. Joust at the net, stays on the Texas side. I think it was a net call there on Butler. She's not arguing. She's Off that dig, there was a joust, and as they came down, she hit that net on the way down. Bottom part of the tape. Eggleston back row, big swing through the block. That's a nice big swing by, by Eggleston. You'll see the, the Baylor block all pinched in here, all the blockers, but she's able to get it through. Well, we talked these two heavyweights, the superstars, Presley and Eggleston. Numbers-wise, it's been all Presley. Thus far, Eggleston, though, getting in on the action. Team's trading points going back and forth. 13th kill, though, for Presley. Looking every bit the reigning national player of the year, Big 12 player of the year, and preseason Big 12 player of the year. And now Trayton blows. That's it. <laughs> That's what we expected to see. And a perfect tempo set by Gabriel to Eggleston. This is what I love about it, that tempo right to the pin. You could see that ball just hanging there for her to hit down the line. Led the team, Eggleston and kills every match. Season high 20 twice against K-State and Texas Tech. Presley sent back but out of bounds from the Texas defense. I'll tell you, number 11, Campbell Bowden, doing such a nice job. She just came off the court, but handling the ball well. I think they, they avoid her as much as they can because she's a fantastic player that can, that can pass, play defense, and when they get the ball on her, she can, she can handle it. Six foot one freshman Bowden from El Paso, Texas. Texas Longhorns going to their star, Eggleston, once again off the tips for the kill. So Eggleston approaching double digits. Nine kills on 22 swings. Gabriel down the line. Trying to make something there, but wide and out of bounds. Had some space. She, she had some space. She saw it. She knew she was avoiding the block, but cut it just a little bit out of bounds. Baylor serving up by one. Eggleston. Long and out of bounds. No touch on the Baylor side. Baylor doing a nice job of serving Texas tough, getting them a little bit off the net. And they put it right in that spot between Eggleston and Yosia as to who would grab it. Where do they go here? Right there again. <laughs> Presley. Big swing by Presley. Texas thought they had secured the point, but it was a big rip from Presley. 
Baylor will take that to 15. They lead by three. Credit to Presley. She's player of the year, and there's a reason why. Absolutely. You know, and I think she was hitting in 700s, I don't know, 780 at some point. I was like, she'll come down. She'll come down to earth. She's not really come down to earth. She's hitting 625 in the middle of the second set as an outside hitter. And I would definitely say, not to get in your head, but your keys was saying, not that Presley wasn't capable, but oh, that no. Baylor at their best ability, they would be moving the ball around. But hey, when she's playing this way, why not just keep going? There? I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, that's, you know, and, and the question is, can she sustain? Right. Is this over the course of the entire match that she can do this? I mean, maybe, maybe she can. Also, definitely think worth asking for Texas. When we talked about this match, when you broke down this match prior, we didn't know that they wouldn't have Morgan O'Brien. Correct. How has that affected Texas? What are you seeing early on missing their starting Libra? Well, a couple of things that are going on. You saw a couple of miscues or miscommunications in the back row. You know, Skylar Fields being in there and serving has been has been good for them. So that's that's you're not really missing a beat. There's a couple of digs maybe that would otherwise be up, um, but really. It's hard to uh, put a value on leadership and calmness and experience and and someone that you're used to do it having that on the court. So I think more, maybe more than anything, uh, that might be something that's being missed right now. The game within the game as Texas talks so highly about their graduate transfer in O'Brien and what she's brought leadership wise for what they are seeing leadership wise from their captain in Logan Eggleston. 3-0 scoring run, saw an ace within that run. But some good pressure. Junior is putting on the Baylor side of the net with her serve. <laughs> Texas had five service errors in set number one. That will be their first of set number two, sixth of the match. So in a two-point first set to give Five away, you always talk about it, the balance between aggression and pressure, making sure you give yourself a chance. Texas trying to ride that line. Net violation on Baylor. We give the point to Texas, even it up at 16 apiece, 12th tie of the set. Looked like Harrison was in the net. Tried to stay out. Tried to. It's hard sometimes, you know it. O'Neal with a good serve, but a recovery from Presley. Free ball coming for Texas. Gabriel for Fields brought up. Back row attack, Eggleston. Saw her reaction, maybe felt like she let one go there. Yeah, it was a nice set. Timing was was perfect. Just really didn't get on top of that ball like she wanted to. Bowden back to serve. See where Baylor goes with the ball here. Down the line. Well, that time into the net. Third serving air for the Bears. Phillips joining Fields and Butler in the front for Texas. Eggleston in the back with Gabriel serving. The service air reciprocated on the Texas side. Then you're going to see Texas try so hard to serve that ball really precisely to Presley. And in that rotation, Bram Shriver's just squeezing her so much there's not a lot of room to get that ball on her. Fields on the swing, cross court is brought up. Texas will get the point, Baylor emphatic. We have Williams pleading her case, Eggleston over there to lobby as well. Well, let's see, this is one of those, those calls, so that ball, if that breaks the plane, and the setter's back row. And the ref is saying that the, the whole ball was over the plane, illegally playing the ball.
Skyler Fields has not been given the key that she can serve yet, so that's why action hasn't started. You hear the Texas home crowd is yeah. disappointed about such. Coach McGuire was out talking with Yasiana Presley, trying to get some clarification with Williams as well. Point stands called for Texas Field serves. Make it now eight. Service errors from the Longhorns. I, I saw a yellow card, but I don't know if that was. Yellow card going from the up judge. Callie Williams, the junior setter, number one, getting a yellow card for Baylor. You saw she was the one pleading her case leading her team's case on that call two points ago. On the Texas side, Riley Heinrich coming in. <laughs> We've had quite a bit here. We're only <laughs> to follow it all. two sets through back-to-back -back matches here. Number one, number three coming off of two great matches last year. We figured we would have Two great matches this year, and we've seen a little bit of everything thus far. We really have, and, and you're going to see that in, in matches like this. You're going to see tight calls and weird plays and, and tensions running high and coaches flying off the bench. Eggleston registering the kill for Texas. Her 11th, it knots it up at 19 apiece. You'll see it to serve. Big jump serve. Eggleston's brought up. Gabriel there for Texas. You'll see it will try for Eggleston who converts. A nice play by Texas. Continue to keep the ball alive. And you see it with a. Beautiful one-handed dig to save the play and keep them alive. And then finishes it, Yosia in the black jersey, setting that ball to Eggleston for her to score. And he, let's stay with Morgan O'Brien tweeting 15 minutes prior to this match that last week tested positive for COVID-19 symptoms, mild, been following all of the doctors, health and safety, Protocol sad she can't be here tonight cheering the team on from isolation. Can't wait to get back in the gym. We've talked so much about here. Coaching staff has gushed about the graduate transfer. Come to Texas just to take graduate yep. school. But then made a conversation happen and Coach Elliott had reached out. O'Brien starting her career at Illinois and things matched up and the rest we have seen play out. She's been an integral piece for Texas thus far this year, but missing her for at least tonight and tomorrow night. But most importantly, we want to see her back and healthy. That's it. That is it. Just to give you an idea, team-wise for Texas, they test every Wednesday, so they did as a team take their COVID test yesterday. Obviously, everybody else, staff, players, safe to be back. 20 apiece, it's been trading points back and forth here in set number two. Who can get to 25? Big opportunity. Baylor on the overpass. And we talked a little bit about this deep serve from Presley, and that ball can drop and sink on you, and that's exactly what you saw. It's coming from a, a pretty good distance. You see there with that view. That Presley serve didn't count. I think the music was still going. I just saw two thumbs up. Back underway, Baylor by one. Making now tied at 21. So who can throw the bigger punch here at the end of set number two? Nice piece from Eggleston, Texas, needing that. Beautiful shot. You see, you see Van Slate super deep on defense, you know, ready for her to go up and crank that ball, and Eggleston just tips it right over the top. Sydney Peterson serving for Texas. 
wow. That is a new face. If you're just watching Baylor for the first time, Lauren Harrison, the transfer from North Carolina, explosive on the swing. Wow, that was fast. That was fast. She got on that quick and hard. And I think really that's the speed that Baylor's looking to have when they're in system, a perfect pass at the net. So Texas, their chance. Eggleston sent back by the block. You see, it will try for her again. Asia O'Neill, the awareness. The ball in the balance, over the middle of the net. And O'Neill delivers. Nice heads up play by O'Neill at the net. And that's, that's what she does so well. She's so aware of her roundings. She has such excellent body control. Smart play by her. Coach Elliott is stuck. The light bulb has come completely on for Asia O'Neill. Really across the course of this season, we have seen that. And the most exciting part, I think, for O'Neill is that there's still more to come, it looks like. So much more to come. 22 apiece. Shook in at the setting position for Texas. Tries Fields trickles down to take Presley off the Texas block. Baylor just scrapping here. Harrison with a nice play out of the net. And this is what I like about Sedwick. I said it right. She knows where she is. She knows that Harrison's down. She back sets this ball off bump kill for Presley. It was the story for Texas in set number one, service errors. They gave away five points. Baylor now with their fourth and at a crucial juncture to give the ball back to Texas. 23 all. Asia O'Neill serving. Has served well thus far. We got a two person serve receive here. She can serve this ball tough in the middle of the court. Texas over there on the block, but Harrison off the hands of Butler and that ball getting over your way. So much force on it, off the swing and off the block. When I just, Van Slate handing, handling that serve, and they're able to run that fast offense again, sneak the ball through. First set point for Baylor to go up 2-0. And another service error. So at 23, they gave a point to Texas, and now at set point, they give a point to Texas to make it 24-24. Now win by two. Presley down the line. Handling the pass, that's the first thing. They got the, the ball where they wanted to on her. And she was right in rhythm. With a perfect rhythm, rhythm set from her setter from last year, Hannah Sedwick. Another set point and going at Eggleston, catching her up high, the service ace. So the Baylor Bears, winners of 11 consecutive on this season, take set number one and set number two. They have not won in Austin in 44 previous tries. Can they make it their first tonight? Oh, two sets to none. Set. This score, though, really decided by a handful of points. You look at set number one, 25-23, Baylor wins. It got tight. Texas had a challenge that staved off set point, but it was the service errors, five for Texas in set number one, and then 26-24 in set number two. So you switch a couple points here or there, it could be Texas's. Any adjustments that the Longhorns need to make? Well, again, they're, they're doing a, a better job, but they need to continue to eliminate those service errors, right? The, the ones where just the wrong opportunity, wrong time, service errors, continuing to move the ball around, exploiting them defensively like they have, moving their shots around a little bit more. But really, they just have to kind of get their composure, keep keep it together, and find a, find a way, find a way to battle. 
So if you're just tuning in, what is at stake? The Big 12, one of four conferences playing this fall, but the only of the four that will decide a conference winner. Why is that so important? A national champion will be crowned come spring, but there will only be 48 teams in that NCAA tournament, not your typical 64. The field trimmed down and the automatic qualifying bid going to the conference champion. So why these two matches so important could go a very long way to determine such. Obviously, one more tomorrow night between these two. Texas having those two matches against TCU, along with two against West Virginia. Have to go on the road against West Virginia. Two left for Baylor as well against K-State. So those teams will have their say as well. But these two teams, the best in the conference last year, and these two matches could go a long way to determine who gets that automatic qualifying bid for the NCAA tournament. And the automatic qualifying bid is, is the golden golden ticket, right? So that's what everyone's looking for. Because if you, you know, you get that at large, that's that's good. You want to be in it, but with a, a smaller field and less teams, it's going to be tougher. It's going to be a tougher path. And they both know this. So they, you always want the easier path, the best route to get you as far as you can in the tournament. And winning the conference is going to do that. Yeah, and I think there's no doubt both of these teams will absolutely be, regardless of who is the champion or who gets an at-large bid. But Coach McGuire talked to us about that. We've asked all these coaches about what the spring potentially looks like. Heard from Karch Karai about that. I think a lot of people don't know, and that is the big question. So dealing in what they do know, one thing with a trimmed down field, it'll be a harder road for the tournament. Second portion of the season will begin in January on the 22nd. The selection date will be on April 4th. You mentioned 32 AQs along with those 16 at-large teams. So what's at stake? Potential conference champion bragging rights. If you go back to last year and how these two teams have played this year and right now, Baylor looking impressive. And that's Sedwick, I almost said Lockin again in a good <laughs> position. Uh, I think she'll give you a pass. I think she will too. I think I'm sure will. plenty of her teammates mess it up. <laughs> Baylor with those new faces, new places that we had talked about with Sedwick being out those first 10 matches. Williams taking over that setting spot, the transfer from Tennessee. We've seen some good contributions from another transfer in Harrison from North Carolina and adding to that player right there, Yasiana Presley, reigning Big 12 and National Player of the Year, looking every bit the part. Well, you know, and there were times last year, even as the National Player of the Year, you start to take some, some swings, maybe right in the meat of the block. And right now, she's tooling off the block, hitting around it, high hands, tipping balls. Uh, so really like her game and how she's playing tonight. Coach McGuire had talked about that prior to the match with us. They had six seniors that all had great voices that they lost from last year's team, but Presley and Sedwick have really moved into those roles, carrying the weight of those six seniors and been phenomenal. So, so much more than just what she contributes in terms of production on the floor. Texas trying to find some of that. And Logan Eggleston knows she has that shot. I mean, it's there. They, they, there's some opportunity and there's some space there on the line. She just keeps cutting it just a little bit past the line. A long time ago. Now, That's no, a while ago. November yeah. 1st against Kansas State. This year, Texas has had one match go to five sets. That was at number 13, K-State. One match go to four sets at Oklahoma the opening weekend. Everything else has been in straight sets. So Coach Elliott, Texas, figuring to learn a little bit about themselves tonight, the resiliency, what they have. Good news for both of these teams, everybody at home, and for us is that we get to run it back tomorrow. Get to run it back. Coach McGuire had talked about the nature of the back-to-back -back format and said, hey, you really find out who the better team is on night number two because of the adjustments and the things that the coaching staff can do in between the first match. Last year it was October 23rd to November 20th, so a month and change between the two matchups in a regular 
season format. But this year, the unique conference-only schedule, playing back-to-back -back matches. Texas getting that point. Salima, one of the things yet to see for Texas, really a long rally. They were in a small hole in the first set and able to get a five to six point rally, but it's been Baylor that's been able to pace these sets throughout the majority of this match. And really going on runs, that's that's big, right? You need point stretches and Peterson doing a nice job serving tough here. To force them a little bit, you know, had a couple of bad calls on the on the Baylor side, a couple of doubles. And that's what they need to do, serving tough to get them out of system, but how about this? 34 swings, you go back two points ago. First air of the night for Presley. She's dialed in. She's dialed in, and that was a tough ball. I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to hit it over. Harrison sent back. Seen Texas a little bit on their reactions defensively, feeling like they've let some go, but getting one there, O'Neal and Gabriel. Gabriel got her hand on that, and she gets fired up when she, she blocks balls, and the team loves it, loves it as well. Texas averaging an even three blocks per set, fifth in the NCAA, leading the conference, but just five blocks through these two sets tonight. Great effort by Gabriel to keep that ball alive. Presley swinging for Baylor. Texas getting the point. Disagreement on the Baylor side will lead to a challenge. Yep, they're challenging a touch at the net. So Coach McGuire, 0 for 1 on challenges tonight. Looks like it would be O'Neal there, but not sure she was. We'll see if that left hand caught it as she's late trying to close there. Presley is up there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking at it. Initial ruling, no touch. Point for Texas would be big to knot it up at eight apiece. Baylor 0 for 1 on their challenges so far this evening. Make it 0 for 2. So 5-1 scoring run for Texas. One challenge remaining for Baylor. Texas, one for one on their challenges thus far. Were we to go five sets, both coaches would get an additional challenge. Eggleston to serve. Asia O'Neill. Another huge swing. That's what Coach Elliott said he's been looking for from her, and we're seeing it more and more, and it's the same swing she did in the first set, just on top of this ball. Perfect timing. So it mentioned for Texas, trying to find a scoring run. 3-0 right now, 6-1 overall. Eggleston going far cross court, but widen out of bounds, so that'll stop the run. Baylor has been able to find distance from Texas. Texas really been playing from behind all night long. As Williams will serve for the Bears. Down the line, O'Neal once again. Texas getting that offense on the slide from Asia O'Neal. Well, and that's a bad matchup right there. Van Slate here at 5-7. In there, of course, for some ball control and passing. And Texas recognizes, sets it behind to O'Neal, just hits over the top. So O'Neal with her seventh kill on 16 swings. Goes back to serve.
So once again, a quick side out. Baylor siding out 67.2, Texas 63.3. Longhorns hitting 247, Baylor 293. That'll help push the percentage up. Perfect pass. And a fast ball of the pin. Again, you'll see Harper just a little bit late, hangs there tight, unable to beat the speed of the set on the other side of the net. Fields has been the second option for Texas tonight, eight kills. Phillips recently inserted. Peterson sat down, could not get an arm out to keep that alive off of Vandermark. Vandermark's been pretty quiet, but see if uh, she can heat up a little bit. Yeah, the second option for Baylor has been Lauren Harrison, 11 kills. Vandermark, that her fourth. Texas goes to Skyler Fields once again. That's something that Texas has been working on, tipping this ball from a really high point, just throwing the ball down. Riley Heinrich in four fields, so Heinrich will serve. Freshman from just up the road, Georgetown, Texas. Tough serve on Bowden. Up from Yosia. Into the middle of the offense from Baylor for the conversion. And it's that perfect dig. And they haven't set middle much. You know, they're throwing it in there when they have the opportunities. I think they know where their points are coming from. But if it's a perfect pass and McGee can get up there quick, they're going to set her. Said for McGee, focus this year from Coach McGuire, focus is from going from being a killer to a score. But getting that balance out of the middle from her as Texas reciprocates. So much as we saw in set number two, teams trading points back and forth. Longhorns leading by one. It's already a double-double for Eggleston, her 14th kill, 10 digs. More the same from Presley. Good look at the floor and straight to it. And Sedwick gets that perfect tempo that she's been looking for. They had a little exchange even right before that ball was served. She's like, give me the ball, set it fast, and I'm, I'm going to score for you. Presley to serve. Into the middle, McGee once again. You know, it's interesting, you're not gonna see a lot of slides on the Baylor, actually any on the Baylor offense. So you'll see Texas block is there. They're pinched in, in tight, waiting for her to swing at this ball, but just not pressed over quite enough. Texas well below their season average in terms of blocking, but arguably playing the best offensive team that they have seen this season. Presley with the big swing, Heinrich there. Eggleston off the Baylor defense. Nice dig by Heinrich. In a really good spot, lays out for this ball. Excellent control. And Eggleston being smart with this ball that's set just a little bit off the net, doesn't have a, a good look at a hard swing. Still gets a kill on that tip. Power tip, right? That's it. 14 apiece. Bram Schreiber there defensively. Defensively, Baylor there, though, on the right side, sending back Eggleston. Texas playing some fantastic defense on their side of the net. Your Sia making big plays. Peterson making huge plays. And I tell you, you could just give credit to, to the Baylor block on that on that play. So 
gives the Bears the advantage. If they take this set, they take the match. It would be very impressive for the third-ranked Baylor Bears. Texas found a lot of success on that side with the slide from Ajo O'Neal. You know, and the Baylor, Baylor block almost in the right spot. You know, she's been hitting that ball down the line a little bit. They might want to kick just a little bit more to the pin, take away that swing. Eggleston. Tough serve. Targets Bram Schreiber. Nice serve by Eggleston, and she went on a run last time. See that? There's a lot of heat and a lot of spin. She's hitting that ball across her body. And I've said this before, there's a lot of funk on that ball. So the funk pays off there. <laughs> Texas needing this to stay alive. Their fourth ace tonight, Baylor timeout. So the teams will discuss. For Texas, Asia O'Neill, eight kills, 18 swings. Texas has gone her way offensively on the slide on the right side, been good. Been so good. I mean, she is playing at such a high level. I mean, between she and Butler, you know, these are two of the better middles you're gonna see in the country for sure. Some momentum here and Texas playing at a higher level right now. Well, we've built it as a budding rivalry. If you looked at the all-time series, 84 and three, you would say, well, that's not much of a rivalry, but what Baylor has done over the last couple of years, specifically last year as well, on their way to the overall number one seed, co-champions in the Big 12 for the first time, going to the national semifinal, losing in four sets to Wisconsin but showing absolutely right now with the reigning player of the year. A lot of key pieces back, but some new faces as well. Just how good of a team they are. Surprised by what you saw there? Oh, I was just watching a little bit of the, the blocking switch and Gabriel ended up on the left and, you know, they had some confusion there and uh, ended up getting set. She ended up getting set on the outside and hitting the ball out of bounds. Also worth noting again for Texas, without their starting Libro, Morgan O'Brien, Found out just prior to the match, tested positive for COVID last week, so not with the team. And just to your point, we've seen on the Texas side, communication-wise, a couple instances where they've lacked communication and it's cost them some points. Can they overcome that, though? Find a way to win this set, push it to a fourth. Skylar Fields doing her part there. And you're going to see a lot of what Texas is doing. You know, Hartford hasn't been set much, so they were doing some blocking switches, maybe to get fields on Harrison, maximize their block a little bit. Uh, and on the other side of the net, Baylor had Van Slate blocking in the middle, you know, playing a little chess here, and that's, that's what you do. Double-digit kills for Skylar Fields. 26 swings, 346 her hit percentage. Harrison, though, has proved to be quite the counterpart to Presley, her 12th kill. She's doing a really nice job, and, and you know, there's, there's different, different rhythm on some of her sets. She's hanging in the air a little bit. She's getting on some fast, and I, I'm, I'm really impressed with how she's able to still continue to attack the ball and score and get kills. Coach McGuire for Baylor said that Harrison's the X factor, has a heavy arm. Passion and drive is big. They were really bummed about missing the spring with her and not getting her integrated. But from what we've seen, it looks like she's doing pretty well she within is. the Baylor system. She is. And, that, and that's what he said takes time, right? You miss all of that when you have so many new pieces and you miss so much of that training and here's our system, this is what it looks like. And now, they're however many matches in, into this season, and they're, start, they're starting to find their group. That's, that's how it works. You need time. 13th match of the season for Baylor, 11th for Texas. First time called the name in number 20, the graduate transfer, Lachey Harper, 6'2", middle blocker, started her career at UCF. Quick kill in the middle, but then back to the bench. Put some defense on the Baylor side. Six block on the night for the Bears. And Baylor doing a nice job here, forcing that ball to Fields to get Texas out of system, pass the ball a little bit off the net, and 
able to set a nice block. That's McGee and Vandermark, a big block. Quick conversation from Coach McGuire. One of the fans in the stands has their flash on their phone. We can see it from our vantage point looking up, but asking that distraction to be taken off. It's clearly from the side of Baylor looking straight up into the stand, so that's being taken care of right now, but that was the conversation. Big swing, Vandermark. Vandermark doesn't have a huge amount of kills, but it seems like she has very timely kills. She does have timely kills, and she's got all the energy that you could ever want out of a player, and that's that's what they need. It's a fast set behind. This is what they've, they've been doing and continuing to work on, and what they've been wanting to get out of her tonight. Just haven't seen it. You see it in some spurts. She's fired up right now. Again, another one that's had the experience playing deep into the tournament, playing against Texas. So she knows what it's like and she knows what this means. Said for Vandermark, her energy and enthusiasm contagious. And there from the start as Texas gets a response from Breon Butler. So 20 apiece, one of Texas's best servers in Nalani Yosia at the line. Texas needing this set to stay alive. Give and go to Presley. On the serve, receive off the Texas block. The give and go, I like it. <laughs> well, again, they, I like uh, Yosia. Serves that ball kind of nice down the line, was able to control it right to Presley. I think it's exactly what she wanted to do, but Presley's been really good as a passer hitter. We call some, some players when they pass and don't hit, they're just hitting just a clean ball when they're a passer hitter. Some people are in better rhythm that way. She's doing a nice job. In rhythm all night has been Asia O'Neal on that slide. Texas needing that answer, getting the side out quickly on one point to make it 21 apiece, courtesy of O'Neal. And right now it's just an automatic side out, right? Especially in that three hitter rotation where you've got Phillips there holding the middle blocker. You don't know who to block. I like that double quick that they're running in that rotation. Harrison off the tips, but You'll see you there. Eggleston. She was confident she got the tips. The point going to Baylor. Coach Elliott's up off the bench for Texas. We'll see if there was a touch. It's already one for one on challenges. We're going to get a second challenge. I don't know. We will see here. Let's see if that was Sedwick. What? Tell you, these touches are a bear to call. I mean, so look at that right middle finger. Middle finger. See, Maybe. you got great eyes. I mean, they're not great. But. Did Sedwick touch the ball? Yes, indeed. So Texas, a perfect two for two on their sideline with their challenges. Call overturned in that circle. <laughs> Texas needing this set. Huge point. Huge point. Both teams with a challenge remaining. Sydney Peterson will remain serving Texas. Three points away from sending this to a fourth set. The Baylor just by one. Huge service ace for wow. Peterson. That was a big one. And they're in a two-person serve receive here. You'll see there's a lot of line given up by Bram Schreiber. And to be able to hit that thing is tough. That's tough, tough to do. It's a big serve by Peterson. A 3-0 run for Texas leads to a Baylor timeout. They are a kiss on the head. Welcome a third member of our crew. Holly Rowe will join us. You know, it's important we had Karch Karai earlier tonight and Holly Rowe tomorrow night. And we have another surprise tomorrow night. I know. I love it. I love when Holly shows up. So can Texas close this out, send it to a four set? How bad do they want it? Three players going to the ground, colliding to keep that sequence alive. Peterson jabs at the ball. 
Texas scrambling, Presley back row. That'll end the sequence, wow. Man, <laughs> started with every defensive player on the floor for Texas <laughs> playing that first ball. They, they all read it. O'Neal had to scramble and then Presley coming in hot out of the back row, super fast. So it stopped the 3-0 scoring run coming out of the timeout. Serving now, Taylor. Tough, tight ball, one, the joust by Jenna Gabriel. She loves those joust, joust and she's good at them. She knows it. Again, this is all timing. You know, you hit that ball second, just wait for it. She's so strong at the net. I love that play, that makes me happy. Yeah, that you really get to see what a player's made of, the athleticism, the strength. Set point for Texas, Eggleston with the big serve. Harrison sent back by the block, but the point for Baylor. Yeah, the ball was on the Texas side of the net. So the Texas block thought they had it. Looked good, but your vantage point, better than mine. As we look at the, the replay, big swing from Harrison, clear. It's between the net and the hitters. Okay, so we'll see where Van Slate goes and see if Texas is aware of that. Another one tight to the net, but rescued by Gabriel for O'Neal. And we will go to a fourth set. I mean, O'Neal, this is where I would go with the ball. This is what she's been doing all night long. And Texas coming back with a win. So we will head to a fourth set. Texas needs a set to send it to five. Last time these two teams got together, it went five. It was 25-23, 25-23 in the first two sets in Waco. Then Texas won 25-21, 25-23 in the third and fourth. 15-19, the Bears prevailed in the fifth set. Are we headed that way this evening? Or does Baylor have their first win in program history in Austin? We shall see. That's what to watch. Bears getting the first point of the fourth, fourth set, excuse me. Butler getting Texas on the board out of the middle. Again, Texas running this double slide. You'll see Presley just go a little bit with Phillips, kind of keeping an eye on her. Give Butler kind of one and a half blocks there. Texas story, offensive balance, 16 kills from Eggleston, 10 apiece from Fields and O'Neal, each and eight from Butler. Longhorn, sixth service ace of the match. Riley Heinrich being asked to contribute and fill a role. We've seen a little spot duty for Heinrich. He's played in five sets coming into this matchup. It's another good serve. Puts the pressure on Baylor, leads to the Texas point. Von Heinrich doing a nice job. I mean, I like what she's done when she's come in the game, served Baylor tough, dug a couple balls. I mean, that's exactly what they want her to do. Goes at Presley. It's a give and go once again, Gabriel there. Texas trying to get in position, scrambling. Block gives him some time. Gabriel will back set for Molly Phillips. Nice defensive effort by Texas. You're gonna see a couple of plays. Gabriel lay out here. And then getting this ball back to Phillips. So 3-0 scoring run for the Texas Longhorns. Make it four. So based on what we've seen from Texas, at least us here in person so far this season, Longhorns have had so much energy here. Enthusiasm contagious on their side, keying off this crowd that we feel is the biggest we've seen at least here this season.
Largest lead of the night at four across any set. And their success really going back to that challenge that helped them win set number three. Haven't looked back and defensively sending some of those swings from Presley back, which we haven't seen this evening. You can only do it so many times, right? <laughs> so many times. But I like what Butler's doing. Even if, when she's late to that fast swing, she's got a couple of really quality touches on the ball, just deflecting air, keeping in the court. But that one just came back super fast. Even Presley didn't have time to get an approach on that one. Yeah, I think with Presley, you give her three swings in a sequence. I'm taking her to finish it off. Baylor stops the hot start from Texas. And they get back on track. Over on the dig. Garcia will try Eggleston off the tips. Kept alive though and sent over free ball coming. Phillips sharp cross court. Texas looking, looking sharper and sharper as this match goes along. That's one piece we haven't talked a ton about thus far this evening. Molly Phillips, what she brings for Texas on the right-hand side. That's her fourth kill. That's the best swing we have seen from her thus far this evening. It's a nice swing, and I think Jenna Gabriel's getting a good idea of what she's got, what she's working with, what's working on the court. See the momentum Texas has rode since that successful challenge. Phillips down again, and we were talking in the changeover between sets. You'd given credit to associate head coach Tanya Johnson on that challenge. It is so close to make that determination. Usually you're going with a clearer idea, but saying, hey, let's go with the challenge here. They did, and Texas hasn't looked back since. Well, that's a big one, and the coaches know that. You know, Coach Johnson was standing there. She's like, yep, it was definitely a touch. And those are hard to see, but when you know for sure, you know they're going to see it. That's something we haven't seen a ton of. Presley usually going over or through that Texas block, but Phillips and O'Neal there. Well, it started with this bomb of a serve by Yosia, getting them a little bit out of system, forcing Presley to have to tip the ball, and that big Texas block is there. Looked like Asia O'Neal solo. Swing from Eggleston. Texas with all the momentum on their side of the net. That's a lot. A lot of balls going, going to Presley. She's asked to do a ton. They're staying steady, digging the ball. But again, this is Yosia with this massive serve that's forcing them to set that ball consistently outside. Well, Salima, I had mentioned it. It just felt like we, and, and we hadn't seen long scoring runs from Texas, but they opened up this set, a 3-0 scoring run, now in the midst of a 4-0 scoring run. This looking like a Texas team that is rest They are dictating now the pace of the match when Baylor was doing so earlier. Well, I mean, that's exactly it. And we talked about them starting off a little bit slow. They hadn't played in a cost job, being in the right spot, but, but really, the serve is forcing Baylor to do some things that they may not want to do all the time. But, you know, they've been setting Presley over and over again. They're happy with that. She's been scoring, hitting astronomical numbers. But this is what I talked about earlier. It's hard. It's hard to sustain. It's hard to do that for an entire match. I mean, she's still playing at an incredibly high level, but it's a lot. It's a lot on one person's shoulder, shoulders. Coach Elliott also talked about Tuesday. Tuesday was a mandatory day off, mandated by the NCAA election day so that everybody could vote and they were unable to get work. So you just talk about breaking the rhythm, the rhythm of the season, obviously Baylor with Tuesday off as well. But for Texas, that long break and knocking off some of the rust for Baylor, they come in. Winners of 11 consecutive, only losing five sets across their 11 wins. Dropped one set in their matchup against West Virginia last weekend as Eggleston is brought up by Van Slate. Now into match, KJ Johnson, number four, on that left side for Baylor. 
So Coach McGuire dipping to his bench. First action we've seen for the sophomore from Pearland, Texas, who will get the swing. Longhorn scrambling there. O'Neill just has to push it over. Free ball coming for Texas. Gabriel for Eggleston off the Baylor block. Staying patient. Not the cleanest of No, points. that's, that's staying the game. You got to stay patient. Uh, both sides of the net. I like what Van Slate was doing, just digging balls on the other side of the net. But Eggleston, when they need a point and they need a smart swing, is going to come through for her team. You had pointed it out to me. I had mentioned it. Number four coming in, Johnson. What's the rationale there over on the Baylor side, bringing well, her in? You know, sometimes you just need to mix things up and see if you can get some more swings on the left side, some more energy, just a different vibe on the left side of the court right now. And, you know, they have the numbers on the bench. They know a little bit more of what they're looking for out of her. We haven't seen her much, so I'm, I'm excited to see what she's, she's going to provide here. It was Lauren well. Harrison that Provided a great second punch earlier in this match. 13 kills overall for Baylor, but going right at Johnson does Texas with the serve. So Longhorn's well aware of the personnel switch. And now they're gonna move her out of that passing pattern here. Work Presley into it. The most energy, biggest lead that we have seen from Texas at 10-3. Presley long on her swing. Again, that timing with that speed of that swing has to be perfect so she can get on top of that ball. Now a 13 to three lead. Overpass on the serve. Texas continuing the pressure from the service line. O'Neill nearly to the floor there. That's a teammate right there That's for you. It helped you out. And Peterson just on this run, forcing this again. This is all about the Texas serve right now. It was Eggleston with the assist on that one, keeping O'Neill up. Texas. Blocking-wise, O'Neal and Gabriel were out there, but a much-needed point for Baylor to stop the scoring run. Johnson trying to go over the Texas block, but too much heat. Did a nice job slowing down the slide a little bit with a good touch on the block. Just missed that ball long. Look for Presley here out of the back row. Longhorn serve continues to pressure the serve received for Baylor. Is that where that whole sequence started, the big serve from Eggleston? Yep, sure did. So we saw Coach McGuire go to the bench with KJ Johnson and will do so once again. Lauren Harrison back in to that left side where she was earlier as Johnson sits down. Texas with a 12 point advantage. <laughs> Salima, wow, just what, what a change in momentum. It was Baylor that was dictating the pace of this match, but you go back to that challenge that Texas won, then they win the third set needing that, but they have put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> Moving fields over to the right side, and we've seen Texas do this, but we have not seen Texas do this against an opponent like Baylor. Well, and again, so you're looking in this, in this rotation where they haven't set Harper much. 
You know, they need to maximize their block over here with Harrison. See if they can switch block a little bit. Which they will. So fields out here. 13-2 scoring run for Texas. Eggleston caught there. Yeah. She knew it as soon as she did it. So you see Gabriel talk to Peterson a little bit. They have to work that out in transition. When she blocks on the left side of the court, they have to figure out what they're going to do once the ball is dug. Callie Williams will serve. Texas with a commanding lead, 14 points. So Salima, take me through both sides. When the lead is like this and you know you're in a potential fifth set, what are the Baylor conversations? What are the Texas conversations? Well, the Baylor conversations is just, hey, let's see if we can find some momentum here, right? Just get a little bit of a run going into the fifth set. You know, you're not going to worry about trying to make up this, this gap. You want to play tough, play as tough as you can, and find that energy back to, to kind of seize that momentum going into the beginning of the next set. Texas, just stay steady. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, that's what, that's what the coaches are saying. Hey, we don't have to do any more than what we're doing right now. We're playing clean, playing clean volleyball. Be smart with your swings and get ready to just kind of put the pedal to the metal at the end of this set. Texas trying to ride the momentum that they've built up. Really just complete night and day. The switch for Texas found it at the end of the third set. They've been sharp ever since, needing six more points to close out. Set number four and send it to five. Second consecutive match that will have gone to five sets between these two teams. But Baylor, like you said, trying to just find those little positives, build some momentum themselves, because at the fifth, it starts clean slate, 0-0. Zero, zero. It's a new ball game. Race to 15. for Texas scrambling on their side and now a 4-0 run for Baylor. So you say, hey, we don't want to say this is over, obviously not, but Baylor digging into the lead. I mean, Texas will call it to defend. So putting this pressure on them, you know, keeps her from doing what she's doing and, and pretty much neutralizes everybody else. Baylor 1-12 all-time against number one opponents. That lone win last year against number one Texas in Waco. Under coach McGuire, one and nine they are for the Texas Longhorns. Look very much on their way to win number two under coach McGuire after the first two sets, albeit very tight sets. But Texas trying to close it out wide on the swing from Eggleston. It's a nice swing. I think the right time, the right set, because Fields came in and played that ball under the block. And there, Texas will stop the run. Rian Butler in the middle. And just can't forget that Rian Butler can score no matter where this ball is, is passed. If you can just lay that ball up for her, she's going to be able to hit over the top. Her vision's gotten better. She's going to be able to tip and score if she needs to. Vandermark with the kill. Working that right side for Baylor. Chanel Bram Schreiber. Will serve for Baylor, junior from Plano, Texas. Goes at Eggleston. Yeah. 
Presley sent back. Phillips, Butler, the Texas block finding life. Their eighth block of the night, Texas. And a huge block. You see a nice read. Again, this rhythm is so perfect. And Butler's hand just finishing over the net, back to the middle of the court. Big jump serve, first look that we've seen from Vandermark with that. Texas goes out to Eggleston. I always love the reactions, because they are, you know, it looked like she was a little surprised by but the she defense. she knew it, it just wasn't tough. Texas getting their instructions from associate head coach Eric Sullivan. Well out on the floor, relays it in. You'll see it to serve. Just ducks over the tape. Out to Presley. Double on the Baylor side. So Longhorns two points away from giving us a fifth set. Serving airs now on the match for Texas. Presley will serve for Baylor. Trailing by 10. Get up two sets to one. Well back on that service line. With the air, set point for Texas. It was Peterson that helped key that Early run for Texas, finding the momentum, finding the energy that they had lacked earlier in this set, trying to close it out. Gabriel for Eggleston. Pancake brought it up. Gabriel will try O'Neal, and as they closed out the necessary set number three, Texas ends the fourth with Asia O'Neal on the slide. Dad looking on, proud of his daughter and the team. Texas, number one in the country, finding their fight, their emotion to send this to a fifth set. Come back to decide it all. Oh. Yeah, there's some runs and some strings from the service line as well. Eggleston, 19 kills, nine airs, 55 swings. She's hitting 182. But the story for Presley, we had came on top of the show, and you had said one of your keys, it can't just be all Presley. She has 26 kills, six airs on 59 swings. She's hitting 339, but the question now, when you said it can't just be her, is maybe fatigue a part of that? Well, it's just hard to sustain that level, and, you know, hitting in the 700s, 600s, 500s, for the course of an entire match. I mean, she is phenomenal as a player, and it's, you know, and is still playing well, but it's hard to continuously play at that level. And yeah, you get tired. She has 60 swings, maybe at this point, 59 swings. Next uh, highest number is 37. That's a lot of swings to take, and we're not even in the fifth set. Oh, she was astronomical, scorching hot in the, the first two sets in terms of her play, but coming down to that level of 339, look, that's no joke either. No. But that graphic you saw there was about halfway through the third set that we saw her first attack here. But also, Salima, what are you seeing? Texas block may be giving her a little more trouble too. It is giving her more trouble. And again, from the serve, getting a little bit out of system, the block's a little bit more in place. They're not running it as fast as they would like to. And that's gonna cause them a lot of trouble. So this a race to 15. For Texas, will they continue their dominance over Baylor here in Austin? 44 and 0 all time for Baylor. Can they make it two wins in a row over a number one Texas team? 
And you're going to see a lot of that. That was a, a perfect set that, you know, you might think she could swing at, but they know where the Texas defense is. So I think this entire set, you're going to see a lot of strategy, matchups, and knowing what each other is doing after, after four games. Every point so pivotal. Real trying fields, working that left side off the defense. And what I've always loved about Fields, she hits the ball at the top of her reach. She's a huge jumper, always gets her feet to the ball lined up so she can hit over top of the block. You rarely see her get blocked straight down. She's reaching and hitting at the top of her reach. Riley Heinrich serving for Texas, a tough serve. Baylor scrambling, cannot get it back. So Texas with that service pressure. Heinrich doing such a nice job coming in, splitting that seam, serving it between Graham Schreiber and, and Harrison. It mentioned for Texas without O'Brien, who would help pick up some of that serving. Slack is their second best server, arguably out in terms of numbers, at least. And it's been a team effort, but they've definitely put the pressure on. It's Presley Long on the swing from the back row. And might look to have Van Slate come in again, get some passing. Yep, there she is. Vandermark will sit down, Van Slate will come in. Just a reminder, both coaches and teams getting one more challenge. So two apiece, Texas a perfect two for two on their challenges this evening. One coming at a huge juncture in set number three, ducking over the tape to serve. Texas defensively sending it back, bouncing to the floor. So a run here for Texas. So you're gonna see the Texas block just hanging here tight, waiting for Presley up the middle while they just stack their hitters now. When Harrison was on the right, Obviously, they were going to know where the ball's going. Now, the key is middle and left. Middle meaning Presley in the back row or left side. Presley from the back row, and that is player of the year caliber. Baylor needing a termination, and they get one. Beautiful piece of attacking from Presley. It's a perfect pass that gets him in system. And Callie Williams delivering a beautiful ball to her out of the back row. See the season high now surpassed for Presley with 27. Out to Phillips on the right. I love that swing by Phillips on the right. She comes in the cross court and then just drops that thumb down and hits it down the line nice and clean. See her cut that ball down the line. It's a beautiful swing. Timely contribution, six kills from Molly Phillips, four blocks, Texas leading by three. You'll see a serving. Into the middle, pushed over by Lachey Harper. Haven't seen a ton of offense out of the middle for Baylor. You know, and that's what sometimes you, you put some things, they're in your pocket. It's like, hey, you know, we haven't said it, they're not expecting it. And they did that earlier with they Harper. Did. It was a kill and then she went right back to the bench. Same thing right there. Gabriel trying for Eggleston. And that dig off the swing from Eggleston set that sequence up. Just having to swing, but long and out of bounds. Phillips will sit down. Peterson in to serve for Texas. She's been good serving tonight, putting pressure on Baylor. Out to Presley, over the Texas block, but long and out of bounds. So Texas with a four-point advantage in this winner-take-all fifth set. Baylor timeout at stake in this fifth set for Baylor, the third-ranked team in the country. Their first win in Austin all time. They're 0-44 for Texas, trying to protect their home court but get their first win trailing 0-2 since November 1st of 2017. But what's at stake in terms of the bigger picture, 
these two teams, I'm sure neither were happy last year when you got to be co-conference champs. No, they like both that. go 15 and one, you hang a banner, but it's got to feel just a little bit empty. I mean, you like to win Absolutely. and it's great. But nobody likes to share. I've been there, I've, I've shared before and I don't like it. <laughs> so the bigger conversation as to what's at stake, the Big 12 championship, this conference will be decided in the fall. No spring matches that will count for the conference standings. 16 match season, both teams still with matches to be played for Texas. They have five, including Baylor tomorrow night. But you see Texas, a perfect 10 and 0, Baylor 11 and 1, their loan loss to Kansas, the opening match of the season. Gabriel trying Eggleston is Baylor getting a needed point coming out of the timeout, but a good answer response for Texas going to their kill leader, Eggleston. That ties her season high. And I love how Gabriel gets her feet. You now Coach Elliott has talked about her getting underneath, directly underneath the ball and how consistent she is when she's doing that. She's really paying attention to that right now. Going to the dump. It was tied on the pass from the serve, but Sedwick deciding to shoot for the Texas defense and has success. It's a veteran play by Senior still getting her legs for the season. Missed the first 10 matches, so just the third match that she has played in. Long looping serve. Texas will go to O'Neill. Over and down the line for Harrison, and that's a name that we haven't called quite a bit for Baylor on that left side. Yeah, she cooled off a little bit, and that's why I think they subbed her out, gave her some time to regroup and get herself back for the fifth set. So Baylor trimming that lead to just one. ball coming for Texas. Gabriel will go to field who terminates, takes it home. The tune of 14 kills now on the match. And this free ball, when you send Texas a free ball, it's going to be trouble. They're going to be in system, hitting high and fast and hard. Tough combination to stop. Texas leading by two. O'Neill serving. Wow, she can do it just in so many different ways, so many different looks. You get it out to Yasiana Presley, 29 kills, match high. Gabriel into the middle for Breon Butler. Set may have been a little bit tight. She got on it quick, knew she stayed out of the net. Kind of made that funny face right at the end there. Up quick, fast arm. <laughs> <laughs> Just like they drew it up. So Texas pushes their lead back to two. Five points away in this race to 15 and now make it four after the big block. Two huge plays by Butler there. First one with the kill and then reading this play, shuffling over and get her hands there and finish hands. Just love that finish by Butler. Solo block for Breon Butler. Texas now 10 kills, 10 blocks, excuse me, on the night. Try Harrison and through the Texas block. Tell you, she's able to sneak balls through the block like nobody I've seen. Is out of system ball. She just kind of hangs a little bit in the air and hits on her way down. Texas block needs to wait just a little bit longer on those out of system balls. Coach her. McGuire saying Harrison transferring over from North Carolina to play in matches like this.
Back set for Phillips on the slide off the defense. So Texas, an answer. So we talked about this a little bit before with this double quick where you have Butler running the, the one. Phillips going behind with the slide puts a lot of stress on the defense. See Bramshire just held for a moment and then diving to her left, couldn't get there. Heinrich to serve for Texas, leading by three, three points away, short serve. Gets Presley to the floor, Heinrich there. As Gabriel through the traffic, she had Big on Butler right there. That's six foot four trying to get the set over her to go to Eggleston. I mean, Heinrich makes this unbelievable play. Lays out for her. you. See her dancing around Butler just a little bit. And Eggleston using that power tip. 25-13, Texas victorious. And they've done just enough here, keeping Baylor at bay, have had answers, and then this mini 4-1 run, but a 4-1 run in the race to 15 is huge. It's huge. It's it's huge. And that's that's what we talked about earlier that you didn't really we haven't really seen many runs by Texas maybe here and there, but this is a big one for them right now. And, and Baylor, of course, needs to get the ball in the right hand, side out, handle this serve, probably coming down the line here to, to Presley. 20 kills for Eggleston, 29 for Presley. Fields 14 for Texas. It's Heinrich serving out of the timeout, going at Presley, so taking out that offensive weapon. It's Eggleston will swing at Presley, who can't bring it up. Texas will have match point. A great pickup by Phillips. Out of the play there, but didn't need her. And Eggleston ready to swing. And the miscommunication on the Baylor side. Three consecutive sets won by Texas. Backs against the wall. Nearly had match point for Baylor in set number three. But the Longhorns prevail. 15-19 in the third and move to 45-0.